Hey folks, Bobbert here. Maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't, but Keanu Reeves returned to big screen science fiction this weekend in the movie Replicas. Whoa. That's right, kids. For those of you that only know Keanu as the unstoppable hitman with a dog-loving heart from the John Wick films, the guy used to be a sci-fi icon. He was Neo, the long-prophesized one from the Matrix movies. And he played Klaatu from the Day the Earth Stood Still remake. Um, eh, never mind that. He was also the eponymous giant mnemonic from the cyberpunk... Um, I can carry nearly 80 gigs of data in my head. You know, maybe sci-fi icon is stretching it a bit. The point is, he used to be in a lot of sci-fi flicks, and now he's in a new one. But you probably didn't know about it because Entertainment Studios, the small indie company that brought us the Mandy Moore shark attack flick 47 meters down and the hilariously aptly titled Hurricane Heist, is dumping the movie into over 2,000 theaters with little to no marketing. Either they have no faith in the flick, or they just can't afford to buy ad time. Either way, Replicas appears to be faded to flop, which got me thinking, what are some sci-fi flops that are worth seeing or revisiting? And are they streaming? Well, rest easy and sit back, because Bobber did all the legwork for you. Let's get jacked into this edition of Bobber's Plugs with the top 10 sci-fi flops you should be streaming right now. Number 10, Robot and Frank. I brought something. Hi, Frank. You have got to be kidding me. That thing is gonna murder me in my sleep. This 2002 flick stars Frank Langella as an ex-con that gets a new lease on life when his son gives him a therapeutic robot companion. It's a charming and quaint little sci-fi flick. Perfect if you're looking for something a bit more easygoing than your average grim dark episode of Black Mirror. The movie never got a wide release and ended up landing in the scrap heap of sci-fi flops. Luckily for us, Amazon has it available to stream for all Prime members. Number 9. Gamer. Cable? It's me. It's Simon. I'm playing you. Released in 2009, this sci-fi actioner from the directors of the Crank films is set in a futuristic world where death row inmates engage in a real-life first-person shooter type game to the death, except they aren't actually the ones in control of their actions. This one's a balls-to-the-wall sci-fi light action movie that also happens to have just a little something on its mind, but doesn't let that get in the way of its fun. It was box office bombs away when Gamer was met with overwhelmingly, and I think unfair, negative reception by critics and audiences alike. But now Hulu is affording you another chance to stream it for free. Number 8, Existence. There's an intimacy involved in playing Existence that is beyond description. They just pop your spine with a little hydrogun. A decade prior, another video game themed science fiction movie hit the big screen, but with a decidedly more psychological and metaphysical take on the premise. This would be the last time visionary filmmaker David Cronenberg would lend his wonderfully weird brain and macabre eye to the sci-fi genre, and he does not skimp on his trademark grotesquely gooey images of body horror. As one might expect, this one tanked hard at the box office, not least of which due to The Matrix being released at the same time. Once again, Hulu's given this movie an extra life, as its subscribers can stream Existence now. Number seven, Strange Days. Have you ever jacked in? Have you ever wire tripped? This is not like TV, only better. It's about the stuff that you can't have, right? The forbidden fruit. On the cusp of the new millennium, 1995 saw the release of this cyberpunk whodunit from director Catherine Bigelow. Set in the last days of a futuristic 1999 Los Angeles, this one gets down and dirty, satisfying our more vulgar appetites, while subtly exploring underlying themes of voyeurism, racism, and abuses of power. Audiences were confused by the marketing and mostly ignored it, making it a major commercial failure that nearly ended Bigelow's career. But now folks that missed out can stream it for free with an HBO Now subscription. Number six, Hardcore Henry. We're continuing my odd and unexpected theme of first-person POV science fiction with this experimental action movie from 2016. Produced by Russian filmmaker Timur Ekmenbetov, this go-for-broke GoPro movie is relentless, bouncing from one action set piece to another with little to no regard for pacing or narrative concerns. Sometimes all you want are for your sensory inputs to be set on fire, and this flick will do the trick. Hardcore Henry had a hard time finding an audience when it was unleashed in theaters, ultimately pulling in a measly $9 million at the box office. But folks at Netflix can now live vicariously through Henry as it's available to stream on the platform. Number five, Under the Skin. Come to me. 
After that intense adrenaline rush, we need to slow things down, way down. 2013 brought us an abstract vision of an extraterrestrial visitation from avant-garde filmmaker Jonathan Glazer. Starring Scarlett Johansson as the aforementioned E.T., we follow her as she studies, hunts, and preys upon the ignorant human males that fall for her wiles. Think of this as The Woman Who Fell to Earth, a spiritual sequel to that equally cerebral and eerie David Bowie sci-fi classic. It's no surprise the film failed to launch at the box office, but now one and all can stream it on Netflix. Number four, Mars Attacks. What is that? White House is coming out live. My fellow Americans, this is a momentous occasion, and our world will never feel quite the same again. Let's lighten things up a bit with some close encounters of the less serious kind. In 1996, filmmaker Tim Burton followed up his biopic of Schlockmeister Ed Wood with his own attempt at making a schlocky alien invasion flick. Loaded with major movie stars at the time like Jack Nicholson, Annette Bening, Pierce Brosnan, among many others, Mars Attacks is the ultimate mad magazine version of a big budget Hollywood blockbuster. So of course, it flopped harder than LeBron James in a playoff game. Burton would go on to blame the film's failure on audiences experiencing alien Alien Invasion Fatigue after the release of Independence Day that same year. I think folks missed out on one of Burton's last truly great movies. For all of y'all Amazon Primers, it's now available to stream for free. Number 3. Annihilation He was extremely ill. You have to tell me where he was, what he was doing. It was his decision to go in. It's something they termed the Shimmer. Now that our palettes have been cleansed, let's continue our alien invasion trend with the most recent entry in this list. Last year, Alex Garland, a filmmaker partly and directly responsible for a whole slew of sci-fi flicks I adore deeply, offered another intellectual and metaphysical examination of how we react to the arrival of the unknown and other. Paramount Studios so doubted the financial potential of this movie, they cut a deal with Netflix to distribute the film digitally in territories outside North America before its theatrical release. Either it was a self-fulfilling prophecy, or they were right that audiences would find the movie, quote, too complicated, but Annihilation ended up one of the biggest box office bombs of the year. It turns out former Commander-in-Chief Barack Obama also listed it among his favorite movies of 2018. If it's good enough for President Obama, it's good enough for y'all. Stream it now on Amazon Prime. Number 2. Cloud Atlas. We are bound to others. Past and present. And by each crime... Let's take a quick break from all this alien invasion stuff and dive into what I believe is the most ambitious science fiction movie ever committed to celluloid. In 2012, the Wachowski siblings and German filmmaker Tom Tyker gathered a star-studded cast that included Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, and Hugh Grant to tell an unconventional, sprawling epic that even old-school Hollywood would call extra. It is a movie filled with great beauty, both visually, lyrically, and musically. Its premise of love transcending time and space is in our arguably a sentimental one. But the idea that all things are connected and the causality therein is science fiction at its most purest and thought-provoking form. The masses pretty much gave up on the Wachowskis after they dared to dig deeper into their philosophical pursuits with the Matrix sequels. And the crowds disappointingly persisted in this indifference as Cloud Atlas finished its run in theaters as a financial dud. But those with a Netflix account can show it some love and stream it now. And number one, Starship Troopers. We're going to war! Everyone fights, no one quits. We are going in with the first wave. You smash the entire area. You kill anything that has more than two legs. You get me? We get you, sir! We close out this top ten with a movie that defies convention, even playing as a reversal to the alien invasion movies we previously featured. At its most basic, the movie is about the battle between two species, humanity and the otherworldly giant bugs from space. But once you start looking beyond the surface details, its true intent crystallizes into focus. Sometimes it's a miracle a particular movie was ever allowed to be made, and this 1997 sci-fi war movie is one of them. 
Once again, the Dutch madman, director Paul Verhoeven, had managed to sneak an aggressively subversive art house movie past the studio execs, granting him millions of dollars to play with as he saw fit. In many ways, a true sequel to Robocop in mind and soul, Starship Troopers exposed and satirized all the tropes one might expect going into a genre movie adapted from a story that peddled in warmongering and the glorification of the military. Audiences and critics were left befuddled at what they thought they saw, an overbloated cheesy movie with bad acting and excessively gory violence. Verhoeven had done too good a job hiding his actual intentions from viewers. It's laughably unabashed fascism and none too subtle allusions to a society modeled after the Third Reich were either ignored or just plain missed by moviegoers. And it turns out Hulu's got you fam. It's available to stream on their platform for subscribers. And there you have it, my personal pick for the top 10 sci-fi flops you should be streaming right now. Leave a comment if there's a movie you think I missed and where to stream it. Hit like if you want more videos like this and don't forget to smash that sexy subscribe button so you don't miss this or any other Bobber's babblings. Until next time, don't forget, it's okay to cross the streams. Thanks for watching.